could that be the outgrowth of the introduction of this new environment? Is that that foundation reemerges at a different level? Yeah, the we could say it's the recovery of human scale, but it's that again, most words are, are fallible and flawed because it's more than words that are involved. But humanity always has been inside its cultural productions and determined them. People never stop talking, which is an obsolete medium. But you can see, you know, caveman reality. They started to communicate with their mouths and gesture, but focusing gradually on their mouths, that was a medium that people loved and celebrated and wallowed in, but caused all kinds of problems. Then later media dynamics and landscapes came along. So, in this new situation, it creates autonomy and independence and detachment from the media. The Android meme offered the autonomy because kids can engage in voluntary SP. In other words, analog media and TV and radio created the cloning of the SP. But now that we can disconnect, the, once we had our, our video recorders and our answer machines, we didn't have to answer the phone right away. We didn't have to watch the show. So you see how we get the sense of being independent and detached from the cloned DSP. So Wired Magazine and the Electronic Frontier Foundation, those uh, Digerati people in the early 90s said, said the whole world's getting connected. They didn't understand the digital environment was disconnecting everybody to a new level of not being dependent on collective media or memes. So that was the software utopia that was very charismatic. That collapsed. Okay. If we move past the hardware collapse of the housing market and the digital economy and the end of the autonomy caused by the digital experience and the, you can live in your own little matrix tube, we move out of that, become aware of the four bodies we evolved, and we have uh, free energy. We now interact with each other with no, underst uh, no parameters, no frameworks. We actually are encountering for the first time the fact that we didn't know the whole story, so we're encountering the mystery body landscape. So the mystery body is lurking now. We don't know what that will mean in our relationship with each other. We don't know how we're going to communicate. All we can see right now, the main part of it, is you could imagine a young kid with their iPhone and uh, drinking some herb juice and maybe uh, having a McDonald's burger for their chemical body. Uh, they might have a sense of the astral body, so they do a little yoga, and they might want to watch TV, but they'll watch John Stewart, which makes fun of the TV body, and they're on the digital. The juggling of those four bodies, which I call quadrophenia, schizophrenia squared, not a negative condition, it's just the fact of what you're juggling, that intelligence and response and yoga that you'll need to handle that is what you know everybody is at this point. And when I look at you, Eben, I know you're in a TV body and a chip body. I know you got four bodies. I don't just go by your chemical body. And how you juggle that is what my psychic intuition has to deal with. So we know that about the mystery body. What cold fusion does in that situation is something new. So it means excitement. But it means ecstasy. It means fake paranoia, fake schizophrenia, fake hysteria and fake panic. As we get more involved in the conquering of disease, uh, satisfying of the hunger of the chemical body, all these things we saw within 100 years. And I would say that everything we see around us will no longer be here. It'll all be absorbed into, I don't know what you call it, quantum computing or something. So we are going into an extraordinary situation. But humanity, as Charles Bukowski said, ruined three quarters, he actually was a stronger word, ruined three quarters of its past and will ruin three quarters of its future. So we are going to psychically and stubbornly mess with this mystery body like we've always done, and that'll create comedy and tragedy and entertainment and abuse value. So remember, the actual fact that we got free energy will be new, but human brains can't take it. Why do you think there's a mystery body? Uh, because we're always, I mean, you take someone 200 years ago, or even in the 60s, old, old grandmothers didn't believe they landed on the moon. In other words, our concept of what we're made up of, and the chip body is just something we excavated or exhumed, as you said, from ourselves. We didn't know that was there. Mm. Even the crystalline energies of the Atlantean community or, or urban legend or myth, 10,000 BC. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a variation of crystalline resonance, but we don't have them. And they didn't have what we have, even though they might have had a pretty interesting thing. The African cultures apparently had pretty neat cultures uh, 2,000 years ago, right? You know a bit about that. Mm -hmm. Is it John Clark and the historians of that, right. that world? We, but those were products of 
non-literate, non-industrial tactile cultures. We now have a totally amazing new situation. Right. And we never knew we'd have that. And we have it now, so we excavated our reality. And this is what we got, so we can assume there's more. And whatever we're excavating, it's uh, it's liniments we can't determine. I call that the mystery landscape. So it can be even beyond the fifth body.